Definitely. I, you know, I don't always know what it is, because a lot of these songs are constructed so similarly from one to the other. Um, but usually there's maybe one little device, the way the harmony moves against the melody, something that identifies that tune that, that I think is really beautiful, that, uh, that I respond to on some sort of intuitive level. So, uh, but I, I have to say I'm very specific about the tunes that I've chosen for this group. We really only have maybe a dozen tunes in the book, if that, uh, which doesn't seem, which isn't really a lot, but um, the ones that I choose really work for me and that I, I'm not sure that we could just pick any old tune and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I mean, we could probably find a way to make it work, but these, these tunes are really ones that I connect to strongly. <laughs> Well, I, I, uh, I've been wanting to do a group uh, utilizing the organ for quite a long time because I have a history with this instrument from, uh, from my family, my mother played. So it's a big part of my, my uh, musical brain. And when I, uh, when I met Gary, uh, I was really thrilled to have met a musician who has deep roots in the tradition of this music, knows these songs inside and out, knows his instrument inside and out, but is creative enough to be able to go the kinds of places that you hear him go. It's a very rare individual uh, that can do that, and it's, uh, it's for me, I feel very uh, fortunate to, uh, to, you know, to have both Gary and Gerald, you know, to be able to interact on the level that they're able to do, to be able to hear the things in the music that they can hear and, and do the things that they can do. It's just a, a perfect situation for me. It's usually uh, played in situations without uh, bass players, so um, there's a, a particular openness that comes with being the chordal instrument but also being the bass player. Um, in the ability to respond to a soloist um, and to change phrase lengths or chord lengths as I kind of see fit, but then uh, also I think one of the one of the most uh, amazing revelations for me has been um, learning to try to play with the drums as a bass player. Um, as a piano player, you have a particular relationship with the drums. Um, and that's an important relationship. There's something about the relationship that the bass and drums have 
um, that is that's I've just found to be really special as I've explored trying to learn to play bass for myself and in, in the context for other groups. So um, those are kind of some of the fun. And plus, you have sustain on the organ, which you don't have on the piano so yeah. much. You know, notes start dying away right away on when you strike them on a piano and the organ. You was the first kind of real-time synthesizer. You can change the sounds as you're playing. You can hold the notes. You have vibrato. There's air moving through it. And uh, so, yeah, there's a lot to read. swing you know uh, try and do the thing that feels the best basically and that's uh, traditionally been called swinging and that concept is wide open you know which includes scraping the symbols it could be anything it could be any sound it could be any texture but the the idea of, of swinging is one of connectedness and having a, a real affinity for the uh, the piece, whatever it is we're doing, and in, in this particular situation, this music is so a part of me and so incredibly inspirational. Even uh, after the millionth listen, you know, I know I know these standards inside out in terms of how they sound, the harmony. And, you know, melody, but I never get tired of it. It constantly inspires me. So, being able to connect rhythmically, because that's my job, uh, becomes so much easier with these guys because it allows me to be melodic and harmonic, is, which is the way I've always heard my my connection to these particular types of songs. Thank you.